in tonight's People, Places, and Things, renowned choral conductor Paul Solomonovich, over more than 50 years of his career, has developed a style and sound that has made him one of the nation's leading conductors, and his choir, the Los Angeles Master Chorale, one of the world's finest choruses. Now at the age of 73, Solomonovich is retiring after 10 years at the helm of the Master Chorale and saying farewell with a final performance at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Pat Morrison tells us about his life, his work, and half a century of music in Los Angeles. It was the first musical instrument, the human voice, raised in song from the Stone Age to the New Age. And one of its most loyal devotees is Paul Salomonovich. In the choral music world, Salomonovich's name brings forth its own chorus of praise, icon, finest choral man around, virtually unbeatable. His work has left its mark on Los Angeles, and that, of course, means the world. I don't know of anything more glorious than the choir that has been molded into a single instrument, thinking the same way. Like the United States motto, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one, Salomonovich accomplishes the same by making many voices into that single instrument. It's not enough that they just play or sing perfectly. I have to instill in them what I'm trying to do, but hopefully that they will make it a part of them so that when I conduct them in the finished project, I basically just guide them. They are feeling the same thing. I don't have to work anymore. The man who has brought the celestial voice to the stage and screen fell in love with its sounds as a boy in Southern California. And he started singing in earnest in 1937 in the boys' choir at St. James Church in Redondo Beach. And I was fortunate to be one picked for this. And Lord, I got hooked by this wonderful experience of singing. But it was as a fan, not a performer, that Salomonovich would find his life changed after another boys' choir came to his church to sing in the premiere concert by the legendary choral director, Roger Wagner. Salomonovich had met the man who would become his muse and his mentor. And I was in the front row, and I can't tell you, I was 11 years old by that time, and I was overwhelmed by what I heard. And I could feel the charisma of that conductor. Salomonovich was 13 when his family moved to a new town, Hollywood, and he moved to a new church choir, St. Joseph's in downtown Los Angeles, where Wagner was director. And I was thrilled to death to be seen for the man that I noted a few years earlier. Solomonovich graduated from Hollywood High in 1945, just before the end of World War II, and enlisted in the Navy. He came back to Los Angeles to enlist again, this time in Wagner's new Los Angeles Concert Youth Chorus, he mixed his voice with those of Marilyn Horne and Marnie Nixon. The group soon became the Roger Wagner Chorus, much in demand for live performances as well as television and film. It was a golden time of choral music, and we were going in every which direction musically, having a good time, learning to be good musicians, and being able to cope with any style. You can't buy that experience today. And this is, I imagine, what would serve me in later years as a well-rounded choral conductor in all styles. The growing demands on Roger Wagner made demands on Salomonovich as the older man turned to the younger to lighten his load. Salomonovich became his assistant director, and at the mere age of 21, he replaced Wagner as music director at St. Charles Borromeo Church in North Hollywood. Fifty years later, he is still there. By 1964, the chorus had become the Los Angeles Master Chorale, a resident company at the brand new Los Angeles Music Center. Solomonovich followed his mentor and stayed on as the chorale's assistant conductor until 1977, when he took up teaching at Loyola Marymount University. He served on the university faculty for 27 years. But when his musical alma mater needed a new conductor in 1991, Solomonovich came back to the Los Angeles Master Chorale.
it was a scary situation. It really was, because I knew of the history of this group and their abilities. And, uh, I had felt that uh, basically in my own mind there was an unproven factor, but it seems to have been successful. I got something right. In Solomonovich's 10 years at the top, the Master Chorale has recorded three CDs, and one of them, Lux Eterna, meaning Eternal Light, was nominated for a Grammy. The voices under Maestro Salomonovich's baton are heard far beyond Los Angeles. In more than two dozen films, from Independence Day to My Best Friend's Wedding, Salomonovich has served as choral director. He has more spiritual audiences, too, including Pope John Paul II, for whom Salomonovich has performed three times. The Vatican has honored him for his contributions to sacred music. Whatever the work or the group, sacred or popular, Salomonovich's signature sound always makes itself known and heard. I think it will be remembered for a very personalized sound. I have to be honest about that. Because no matter who the director is, they cannot duplicate that sound even if they want to. No conductor can because each conductor physically looks different as they stand in front of the chorus. And now, after his half-century through the Master Chorale's incarnations, ten years of it at the helm, he is handing over the baton to a new music director. And so the sound will be different, and I hope it will be, with the new conductor. And, and thank God it will not be the same, because that's the refreshment in the musical life. In tidying up loose ends before his retirement, Salomonovich came across a letter from his old mentor, Roger Wagner, congratulating him on that long ago day when he first took up the job. When I founded the Master Chorale in 1964, it was my hope that you would ultimately succeed me as director. The sound of the Master Chorale at the present time not only proves your qualification, but makes your old teacher of more than half a century a very happy man. With much love, Roger. Such words are music to his ears, but as he looks back on his career, Solomonovich treasures more than the plaudits of his colleagues and critics. I think what pleases me more than anything is that people will write and will say that the, uh, the, all of the CD was given to them as a gift and it overwhelmed them and they play it constantly. And when you reach the common person and not just the music expert, this means more to me. I'm very proud of that.